welcome to this video on exponential functions and um, I would just say now at this point please make sure that you are fully comfortable with the rules of indices and the rules of logs we will be requiring both to answer this question and um, if you are not or if it's been a while since you've done them I would say maybe go back and look over those videos so there's two separate videos one that's um, the rules of indices and one that's the rule of logs and they're basically looking at um, using the formula in a more basic way or rather a more straightforward way so in this video we're going to look at exponential functions so these are usually a problem solving question and they they basically contain an e so we're going to have a very similar approach to all questions like this and now um, when you see all the questions they can be very different they range from bacteria to water cooling um, and even you could see something about body temperatures um, but we're going to approach them all the same way so we're going to work through this question and hopefully you'll be able to apply what you learn to any question that you see like this what i would say is do you remember that these questions are similar even though maybe at first glance they look very different because of the way that they're laid out or the topic that they're on So this is a problem solving question on exponential functions that appeared on the DEB 2013 mock, it's from paper one. Um, this was very similar to many of the questions that we will see. So let's take a look at what the question is asking. So future population size can be described using the exponential equation that P of T is equal to A E times sorry e to the power of bt where a and b are constants the size of population sorry the size of population size pt can be determined at various points in time t the population of a certain village was 1500 in the year 2000 and 3560 in the year 2010 okay they want us to find the value of a and find the value of b correct to three decimal places so the first thing to notice here is that they've provided us with the actual function itself. Now, you could get this in two ways. So the first way is like they've presented to us here with some of the constants not given. So we've been given A and B, but we don't know what they are and we have to work them out. So that has appeared on the exam before. Um, they could provide you with the formula as is you know that we just need to work with it and sub it in and that has come up before um where a and b haven't been given it's more of a problem solving and it appeared in section b while when sorry when we were given the a and the b that was a section a question so just to see how it differs now we're always going to approach these questions where we don't know the constants in a specific way so what we want is we want the first variable that we sub in to be zero so we want to find a and we want to find b and in order to do that there's two variables we need to basically make two equations so without two equations we won't be able to solve for two unknowns and uh, we know that from our algebra so they've given us two points and the first is the population being 1500 in the year 2000 and the second one is the population being 3560 in the year 2010 okay so that's kind of the first point they gave us and this is our second point here so we always want our variable to be zero so in the first point we're going to take the year 2000 as time equals zero and that's absolutely fine to do and you'll find that you generally will have to do this you'll have to take the first point that you're given and take that as the time is equal to zero uh, usually in exponential questions we are dealing with time so when time is equal to zero we know that pt is equal to 1500 okay so let's go to our equation then or our formula that they gave us so the p of t so 1500 is equal to a which we don't know e to the power of b and we're subbing in zero instead of t now watch what happens so the left hand side stays the same but when we come over here to our indice or our power so b by zero just gives me zero so 1500 is equal to now any number to the power of zero is one 
Um, so e to the power of 0 is also 1. So we're left on this side with simply a. So this provides us with one of the constants straight away. Now, if we did not have that 0 to sub in, we would still be left with a b and an a, and we don't want that. We should be able to use the first point to always identify the coefficient, so the constant that appears before the e. So let's take a look at our second point that they gave us. So if the year 2000 was time equal to 0, then the year 2010 must be time equals 10. Okay, so we always are working with t equals 0 to begin with, and from there we're counting on. So here they've told us pt is equal to 3560. So let's sub into uh, the function that we were given, 3560 is equal to, now remember we know a this time, so I'm going to put that in, so that's now 1500, and this is e to the power of b10, okay, so let's clean that up a little bit first, 560 is equal to 1500 e to the power of 10b. Now, if I want to find an unknown in the power, we have to convert this to a log. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar with this, please go back and look at the video where we are looking at logs in particular. So it appears in the rules of logs video. So before I can use the formula that appears on page 21, so it's at the top right hand corner of page 21. Uh, it converts indices to logs and logs to indices. So before I can use that, I need the e to be on its own. And at the moment, there is a coefficient, there's a 1500. So to get rid of that, I'm going to divide both sides by 1500. And what happens here is these two cancel. Apologies, lost my zero. And we're left with, and I'm just going to flip this around for ease. So e to the power of 10b is equal to 3560 all over 1500. Now, my advice would be at this point not to turn that into a decimal. Let's keep it as accurate as possible. Um, and we can now convert um, our indice into a log. Now, I'm going to use the circle method. Okay, so I'm going to say um, we get log base e of 3560 over 1500 equals 10b. Now, if you're not familiar with the circle method, that's absolutely fine. Uh, what the circle method does, it tells us the first thing to put in, the second thing to put in, and the third thing to, come in, to put in. So the log, the first thing then you put in is the base, the second thing is of what number and then the third bit goes the other side of the equals you should get the same answer using the formula on the top right hand page of uh, sorry top right hand page of page 12 it's indices and logarithms so um we're writing log to base e but this can be shortened to ln so the natural log of 3560 over 1500 um, equals 10b. So b is equal to the natural log of 3560 over 1500, then all that divided by 10. So um, I do like leaving everything as is um, until as late as possible because what I find is then it can be more accurate. Um, I also just don't like writing down a lot of decimals and having to judge about when to round. So if you're unsure about rounding and when to round, I would say try leave it um, in fractional form as long as possible. So putting all that into the calculator, you should get B is equal to 0 0.086. 4 to 9. However, they wanted it rounded to three decimal places. Now, please make sure that you're um, comfortable with the difference between decimal places and significant figures because they could ask that. So, um, based on what we have above, it's going to say as 0 0.086 because the next number is 4. Um, so, we won't round. So, what that means for us is the formula, and I'm going to just put it over here, 
is actually 1500 uh, e times uh, 0 0.086 t. So this is our new formula updated now that we know the value of a and we know the value of b. So part b of this question then said determine the population size of the village in 2020. So just to put it up on the screen what we worked out in the previous part was pt is equal to 1500 e to the power of 0 0.086 t. Now in this case they want um 2020 which is 20 years after the year 2000 so time is equal to 20 so we're basically finding p of 20 so we're simply subbing into our formula so it's 1500 e to the power of 0 0.086 by 20 so when you put that into your calculator and work it out we should get a 376.79 Seven nine. Okay, now just want to bring your attention to this that they ask it for three significant figures. So what significant figures means? It means non-zero numbers. Um, it does not mean before or after the decimal place. They can actually appear anywhere. So what we do is we start counting from this end. So we have one significant figure, two significant figures, three significant figures. So basically after this, we need to round it. So based on this, uh, the number that comes after is a 6, so we'll round up. So it's going to be 8380, and that is our answer. So do be careful. It does not mean the same thing as three decimal places. Three significant figures means three non-zero numbers. They may appear before the decimal place like they do here, or they may appear after the decimal place. It really depends on the question, so just please do watch out for that. Okay, so let's take a look at part C of this question. During which year will the population of the village reach 15,000? So just be careful with this, during which year. So um, when we find a year, we need to figure out during which year is it going to happen. So um, I'll come back to this as we, as we get an answer, but just bear in mind what the question is. So again, I'm just going to put up um, the function that we have, 0 0.086 t now in this case i know the population is going to be fifteen thousand, but i don't know t so i'm gonna to have to figure out t now since our unknown is back up in our uh, indice or in our power we're going to have to use the logs however before i use logs i'm going to have to get rid of the coefficient or the number that's in front of the e so let's do that now so I'm just going to rearrange, put the E on this side just for ease. Um, 0.086t is equal to, and this will give us 10. Okay. So again, we're going to our log tables, page 21, and we're going to use our formula to convert. Okay. But I'm actually going to just use my circle method here. 1, 2, 3. So it becomes log to base e of 10 is equal to 0 0.086 t now remember natural log is log to base e so the natural log of 10 is equal to 0 0.086 t so um what we're going to do then is divide both sides by 0 0.086 these cancel 0 0.086 so what i'm left with um, i'm just going to bring it up here t is equal to the natural log of 10 all over 0 0.086 and putting that into the calculator should give us 26.77 now what that means is it's going to happen 26 years and 0.77 years later what that means is it's going to happen during the year 2026 it will happen 0.77 so um if we just take a look and roughly say that's approximately nine months so it happens nine months into the year but remember that the question did ask us during what year so just be careful we're not always rounding up it wouldn't be correct to say 2027 because it doesn't happen in the year 2027 
it happens in the year 2026 so it happens 26.7 years after the year 2000 which would still be during the year 2026 so hopefully that was helpful and um, like I said if you can go back and look at similar questions like this that have actually come up on the paper you'll see that um, we have very similar styles of answering them so on the 2014 paper one uh, question nine that was about water cooling and um, so that was quite similar and we would have had a same idea as this type of question uh, it did involve drawing a graph and a little bit more to it but other than that it was quite straightforward and by the end of it it does bring in a little bit of differentiation so um, you can take a look at that one. Uh, in 2013 on paper one, question three, they had a much more straightforward question. Um, it was, like I said, in section A of the paper. So it provided us with the constant B. So all that we were required to do was to sub into the formula um, and also to work out something using the formula. So we didn't have to worry about getting the formula in that question. And if you go to 2011, again, paper one, question four, it wasn't in section B. It was actually in section A, but um, we did have to work out the constants in that. So that's three questions maybe to go and look at now and just to see how we have a very similar approach to all of them. And hopefully um, that will be helpful and you'll find those questions a little bit easier.